Hey everybody, it is Mr. Fred Please here at American Kembo Karate Systems of Monk's Corner, South Carolina, or uh, today we are in the sweatshop, or what I like to call my garage. And today's video is our adult short form number two. So what I want to demonstrate is my interpretation of Ed Parker's short form number two. Um, and you're going to see lots and lots and lots of varieties of this form, even though we probably should standardize it a little bit more, but that's okay. That's the beauty of Kembo Karate. It's a very dynamic art. Um, so I'm going to show you my interpretation or how um, I am uh, teaching this to my adult students. Um, if you have an insight or even a comment or something you want to um, address, uh, feel free to leave it in the comment box. Um, this way we can maybe start a good discussion about short form number two. Anyway, uh, short form two is the next stage in our beginning level forms for adults. Uh, as many of you know who are following the Kempo Karate, the Ed Parker Kempo Karate progression, we have short form one, we have long form one, and now short form two. The ones and twos are your beginner or basic forms, and then threes and beyond are what are called your advanced or your self-defense forms. So short two is a continuation of what we started in short one and then uh, in long one. So in short one and long one, you learn two very, three actually super important things. One, you learn that we always step away from a strike, we never step into one. The second thing we learned is if we need to block, we meet it to beat it so we don't eat it. And third, we talk about with the stepping away, the distance is always going to be your best friend. In the long one, we take those same ideas and then we add to that every block has a follow-up. Now in short two, we're going to start to talk about, well, what is our next step in our training and our development? So from here, we come to attention stance. We say Kempo Kata, short two, and then we sweep out. Now, in short one and in long one, we taught you to always step away from a strike, never step into one. Short two begins with the very first exception to that rule. So short two begins with a block in, chamber, up, chop and cover. Now you say, wait a minute, didn't you teach us you always step away from a strike, you never step into one? And I did teach you that, except when you can't. So there are going to be situations where you cannot step back, whether you have an attacker behind you, your back's against the wall, what have you. So Ed Parker had a plan for that, and he said, look, when you can't step back, you have to step into. But if you're going to step into, there are certain qualifiers that you must do. And the most important qualifier is you must lead with your weapon. So from here, in shortcut number two, I know I'm not stepping back. So the first thing I do is I extend the block. And I cross from a defensive zone, essentially into an offensive zone, with the weapon first. Once I do that, boom, now I can establish my base. Now I can bring that chamber up in that figure eight pattern, chop and cover. Now if I do this on one side, I'm going to do it on the other. And notice, I'm going to bring my hands up, keep myself protected. I'm going to shoot the other block, because what we do on one side, we do on the other. There's the block first, down, chop and cover. Excellent, I've done my inward block. So what comes next, my outward blocks. Now, from here, I'm gonna pull the left knee into a cat stance as I cup and saucer my hands. So the left hand is over top of the right. Now, so far, you have done block, then strike. Block, then strike. Block, then strike. Here is something brand new. And what's brand new about this is that we're going to block and strike simultaneously. So from here, I'm going to establish myself into my left neutral, outward block, and strike simultaneously. Well, if I can do that on one side, what comes next? Cup and saucer, right knee pulls in towards 12, establish my right neutral, block, and strike. Excellent. I've done my inward blocks and my outward blocks. What comes next? My upward blocks. Okay, I face 12, Phase nine, phase three, so what's left to face? Six o'clock. Now, this is something that I learned from Mr. Larry Tatum out in Southern California. So from here, what Mr. Tatum does is he compresses. So he pull, draws to his cat, but then he compresses. Because the next motion, as we know, is an upper block. So what he would talk about is drawing the energy from low to high and getting underneath the strike. 
almost like if I was walking or too tall for a door frame, I'm going to go under the door frame. Or, essentially, if I was lifting something heavy, I'd do it with my legs. Well, same thing here. Because they're coming down on me and I'm compressed, I'm going to drive with my stance and I'm going to take my upward block strong. Now, my follow-up is going to be a hit and a rip. So I'm going to middle knuckle strike and pull down. Right, hitting in the solar plexus and ripping down. So, boom. Now, the stance that I'm in is what's called a wide kneel, and I'm gonna get real deep. Now, if I can do this on one side, I'm gonna do it on the other. But in this case, when I compress, because my attacker is to the rear, I'm gonna V step away. So, I'm gonna draw from out to in, compress, and come this way and strike. Uh oh, I've got an issue. Did my inner blocks, did my outer blocks. I've done my upper blocks, but I'm back at 12. Oh no, whatever should I do? Because I didn't do my downward blocks. I know what I should do, explore a new stepping away. And that new stepping away is 45 degrees. Because so far every angle has been a right angle, 90 degrees. Here, as I'm compressing, I'm coming to the rear. So again, I come in to out. Now as I step, downward block. Now I'm going to be attacking, so what do I do? Check with that block. So blocks and checks. Now I'm going to thread the needle. So I'm going to take this palm strike to the face. Bam. Well, if I can do this on one side, I'm going to do it on the other. So in this case, I'm going to cat towards the corner. I'm going to get that block going, because I'm a little bit blind here. Boom. Now I'm going to check. Before I enter the zone, the weapon has to be there. Strike. All right, now what do I do? I've finished my inwards, my outwards, my upwards, and my downwards. What do I do? Because I didn't finish the other two angles. So this is where Ed Parker would insert the first idea that you'll see later in self-defense. So from here, he would teach the notion of what is called point of origin. So from here, we've talked about point of origin going point A to B. Okay, so if I was here, reverse punch, bam. Well now, this is my blocking hand. I'm facing this direction. So I'm going to go from point A, boom, to point B. Now I'm going to establish my neutral as I self-defense outward block, which is different from the traditional block. Here's short one and long one. Here's even in short two. Here's the self-defense. Now I follow up. Boom. Well, if I do it on one side, point A, I'm going to do it on the other. Block. Here. Boom. Square and close. Okay. Now I'm going to turn around and face the direction you're facing. So again, from here, right hand, kebokata, left hand. Short two, we sweep. Left away from the right. Now I'm entering. Right hand does an inward block. Continue to figure eight, chop and cover. If I do it on one side, I do it on the other. I use the hand to protect. So the left hand's gonna shoot. As the left hand shoots, the blocks come in, down, chop and cover. Now, cup and saucer. This time, left neutral into left outward block and strike simultaneously. If I can do it on one side, I do it on the other. Bam. Now from here, I have to face six. So I come together and then I compress. Now I'm gonna come underneath as the rising block or the upper block is shooting up, I'm hitting and striking. I should be in what's called a wide kneel where one knee going towards six, the other one's going off towards essentially 730. Okay, boom, it's an awkward stance, but I'm getting a little bit of stability here. Now again, I come in to out and compress. Then turn, the block goes first, up the path, hitting, coming down, boom. Now from here, I gotta face the corners because I haven't finished my downward blocks. Oh no, so I come in to out. Again, same compression. Here's the block. It's a little blind. Now, checking. 
thrusting with the rear hand as I slide through. If I can do this on one side, I do it on the other side. Cup and saucer. Again, the block's gonna go first because I'm a little bit blind here. I wanna step, boom, check, palm and cover. Uh-oh, I need to get to these corners over here. So I'm gonna use point of origin, point A, right here, to do what's called an opposite hand, opposite foot, block and cover. And you saw this in long kata number one. So here, when we did our downward block and punch, we knew we had to block with this. So we came opposite hand, opposite foot, step back, block, counter punch. Here's, again, the application of it, boom. Opposite hand, opposite foot. Now, this comes up to the self-defense outward block. Here's tradition, here's self-defense, boom. Now from here, new kind of strike, half fist, bah. If I can do it on one side, I do it on the other, so I step to the cap, blocking, self-defense outward block, half fist, square up, and close. That is shortcut kind of number two. I'm gonna do it at full speed facing you. Uh, here we go. Kamakata, short two. From here. Hip. Hip. Sip. Sip. Take your time, break down the moments, movements, practice, and if you have any questions, you know where to get a hold of me. Have fun.